Alright, just go ahead with me, ready? Three, two, one. Mr. Brignac? Hi, I'm Hi. here for the interview. Uh, Mr. Caulfield, nice to meet you. Yes, it's nice, nice to meet you. you. <laughs> All right, so uh, today uh, we just have one quick interview question for you. Oh. Um, I'll first start out with asking you the question. Uh, do you know what, uh, you know the toy dominoes? You, you, the toy dominoes? Yeah, yes. not the pizza place. Uh, not sorry. the pizza place, sorry, <laughs> I, I got excited for a second. <laughs> sorry, only the, the toy. So um, as you know, uh, dominoes are a lot of fun. Uh, children love to play with it especially. Um, and uh, an often thing that children do is they stand them up in long lines, right? Yep. And then, you know, there's the fun of knocking them all over. Just go... Doo -doo -doo -doo. However, if you've played with them, you know that occasionally uh, you have an experience where you push down a certain amount of dominoes, but you fail to knock down the next one. Yeah. And then you have to push it again, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, our question today is given a setup of dominoes, how many pushes would it take for you to knock down all the dominoes? Uh, and I'll give you uh, a little bit more uh, details input-wise. So your input is going to be uh, multiple lines. Um, the first line is going to contain two integers, right? Mm -hmm. It's going to be, uh, each integer will be no larger than 100,000. The first integer, M, will be the number of dominoes. And the second integer, n, will be the number of lines for the data. That's a little complicated, so I'll give you more information as the time goes. Uh, what I meant by data was essentially on each line you'll have two data points, x and y. Okay. And that indicates that given those two integers, x, if pushed, will knock down y. So. That's a lot of information, so I'll give you an example of the test case. Awesome. Um, you. So you'll have two integers starting. For example, uh, you could have three. Oh, sorry. Thank you for holding the board. Three, two, right? Mm -hmm. So this will be the number of dominoes. Is this one? In okay, yes, yeah, so this is the first integer. Yes. Yep. And then this will be, uh, let's just call it number of data lines and i'm given this number as this is a single integer not two integers. oh reports. sorry there's meant to be like a space okay. so realistically i should give you a better example it'd be something like three space two awesome yes um next thing would be uh one of two lines right because this is number of data lines so you could have something like one two and then two three okay. this indicates that if one is pushed, it'll knock down two. If two is pushed, it'll knock down three. Okay. You are supposed to figure out how many pushes it will take to knock down every domino. Because there could be gaps such as, um, let's say a four, two. You could have something like one, two, three, four. So... What this is saying is pushing domino four will knock down dominoes all the way. No, to not necessarily. No, remember, the first line is the number oh, of dominoes, yes, and then two is the number of data lines that follow. Okay, and then, so in this case, one knocks down two, and then three knocks down four, but two does not knock down three. Exactly. Awesome. Okay. Exactly. So I need to count how many times that occurs. Exactly. You want to return the number of pushes. Okay. So first. I wrote my name and Thank you. Uh, email. First, um, would you mind if I erase yes, this? Yes, go example? ahead. Take as much uh, space on the board as you'd like. Um, so first thing I'm going to do is read the input, right? Uh, I'm going to choose, you know, like, I guess I don't have to code straight up right now. Uh, we're more just looking for your idea. You don't, okay, don't worry awesome. about exact code, so, syntax, you know. Awesome, thank you. Um, well... I think my initial solution would be uh, to start out making an array with all of these as inputs. Or I do need to do that. You can do it a faster way if you just check if the input here does not equal the input there and then you can count how many uh, gaps there are. 
Um, so what I would do is I take the input, first I take this, you know, there's four dominoes and there's two, or sorry, clarification of the question. Yes. Do I need to count how many dominoes aren't hit or do I need to calculate how many times you'd have to knock it over again? You have to calculate how many pushes it would take, how many dominoes you have to push in order to knock down every single one. So for example, in this okay. one, it'd be two pushes because you have to knock down one, which hits two, and then and three, which hits three. Right. And so now I'm thinking of a unit test such as five, two, one, two, four. If, if you aren't allowed to give me the answer to this possible unit test, that's all right. Would a test case like this include um, three pushes, or would it still be two pushes? Because you wrote the number of data lines at the top to be two, there would not be another three at the bottom. However... Or wait, I didn't mean, sorry, I didn't mean that. No worries. Uh, would this be two pushes or three pushes because the third domino needs to get knocked over itself? Every domino will be represented as a data input. Okay. So this test case would not exist. Awesome. Thank you. Um, so what you could do is you just, uh, first you know that, the amount of dominoes. Second, you know how many lines you're given. Um, if this second number does not equal this number, you add one to the push count. Um, if it does equal, you keep the same. So every single input you take, you can just have a like array, or just like you know, nums, and then you just have it like like that, right? There's two things, and then you have like count or count should be step or whatever, count zero, and then you input, you store input. Uh, this is after you've taken both of these. You just store the first one here and the second one here, right? And then once you did that the first time, you go to the second iteration and you check. Uh, so, where does anybody put it there? And then you go to the second iteration, you check, uh, you take the input, you check if the first number is equal to the second item in number, in nums, because that was the previous one. Um, so, you know, like second, this can be general, it'll be generalized to n solutions later. Um, second input is this, check. Then count plus one. Else, you're gonna set, or you don't need the else. If this statement is true, you add one. Uh, regardless of whether or not the statement is true, you are going to switch the nums. Uh, so you're gonna switch nums to the newly taken input. So nums equals second input and then uh, really you just kind of put all of this in a for loop uh, for the amount of lines you have so once you do that you uh, should you know return count count sorry the whiteboard is kind of hard to write on return count and that should yield your answer, I believe. Um, another way to do it, it would take more um, memory, mm -hmm. uh, which, so I don't think it would be best to do it that way. But this one takes constant memory, because you only need two. I so, O of one memory time, and then O of N run time, because there's N inputs. So you answered my first question, which was, what is the runtime and space complexity? So you oh, say awesome. constant space and, con uh, sorry, O of N uh, runtime, correct? Yes. Okay, so um, I want to ask, 
uh, how would your algorithm handle cyclic situations? Like a situation where the dominoes are in a cycle, for example. Oh, okay. Um, I was not aware that that was a possible input choice. Um, I believe that if we, if you were given a cyclic item, such as, let's just take this example, um, four, three, right? If you're given one, two, three, four, four, one, this, Im this implies a cycle, right? Yes. Um, you, one, well, first off, one would already have been knocked over. Um, so I don't really know how it would get knocked over again. Um, but uh, I believe that my solution would not work in, actually, no, it would still work because you need to knock it over once and then zero times here. So you it would still work. You need to knock it over once. Oh, I guess, I guess twice. I had a flaw in my solution. You need, you need to start this with one, considering you need to start knocking it over. Um, I apologize for my uh, inaccuracies in my first no worries. Uh, yes. example. Um, are there any other, <coughs> pardon me, are there any other data structures that you could use to optimize your solution, or do you believe that your use of data structures is best? I'm thinking about this. I believe that my use of data structures is uh, the best because, or uh, sufficient, um, considering that I can't think of any graphs, trees that would be applicable to this situation. I can't think of any uh, way to use any heaps. Um, I can't think of. Uh, I can't think of any data structures that would be useful for this issue. I mean, maybe a map, I guess you could map things, but I don't think you necessarily need to. Um, on, uh, in a cyclic situation, you may need a map. Um, if you want to map all the starting ones you've already pushed over, but I don't think you necessarily need a map. Okay. Um, considering we already have O of one, Time, or space complexity, you know, then time uh, Last question. What if there are multiple sets of disconnected dominoes? For example, um, dominoes that do not knock each other down. How would your algorithm handle that? My algorithm would still handle that accurately because let's change this situation. That was similar to the first question I asked. Mm -hmm. um, where I, where I gave, uh, asked for clarification on this input, it would still ask, it would still say two because you're pushing over one and then you're pushing over the second one. Um, so you still push it over twice. However, there is still one domino that remains upright, which it would not account for. Um, and it would not uh, calculate that. So this input would yield two in my solution here. Uh, and it would exclude the third domino that is left standing. Some way we could include that would be just if, if this is true, we just do the, uh, we take the difference of these two numbers, minus one, and we add that to the count so we can know how many numbers are in between those two routing. Um, that's how we would do it. Awesome. Well, that's all the questions we have for today. Thank you very much for coming in. Well, thank you for having me. We'll be in contact soon. Awesome. Have a good one. You too.